So this week we're talking about text organization. So we're going to read this passage, the Coney Island hot dog. And we're going to figure out what organization the author used. In this lovely passage, and in that video that you watched by Flocabulary, it talks about the different text features or text organizations that an author might use. So let's jump right into it. The Coney Island hot dog. And we have a caption right here. Permission provided by the Museum of the City of New York at, they give us a website there. Whoa, they paid $250 to use this. Wow, big money. Like the immigrants who make up our unique American culture, the story behind the Coney Island hot dog is extraordinary. Ooh, we can take this word, copy it, copy. We can go over here and we can paste it right there. Let's see. Extraordinary definition. It pops right there for us. Very unusual or remarkable. Or an item that is not arising from normal activity. So just not normal. Most food historians credit German immigrant Charles Feldman with the invention of this American favorite. Feldman sold baked goods to beachgoers on New York's famous Coney Island. So it sounds like Coney Island hot dog, famous Coney Island. It sounds like the hot dog gets its name from where it was made. He soon realized that hungry visitors would pay handsomely for a hearty handheld snack. He sliced a fresh bun and added a piping hot frankfurter, a traditional German sausage. Feldman's invention, which he called the Coney Island Red Hot, ooh, so changed his name from hot dog or from red hot to hot dog, was an instant hit. Hit. Ooh, like a hit, like it's popular. Demand was so high that Feldman went from a push cart in 1869 to a permanent stand in 1871. Ooh, so I see the word went from. So that means we're seeing a progression of time because you don't just one day. You went from zero seconds to zero seconds. If you say went from, it's a couple seconds to a point in time, right? So you say, I went from the classroom to the hallway. It took some time. So we're seeing a progression of time. Mm -hmm. Right here, you also see the invention of this American favorite. If you invent something, that's the first time, right? So I'm seeing some time right here. Businesses continue to boom. By the early 1900s, Feltman owned a string of eateries. Eateries is a fancy word for restaurants. His businesses included hot dog stands, or red hot stands, as they called them earlier, seafood restaurants, dance halls, and carnival rides. Right here I'm seeing continued to boom. That means we're seeing some more time. And then by the early 1900s, we're seeing even more time. So what I'm getting from this article is that it's telling me the progression of time, the order of things that's happening. So... Fancy word for that, sequence. So this text seems to be organized by sequence. But remember, each paragraph can have a different organization than the whole text. So if the whole text is organized by sequence, some paragraphs might have a different organization. It's no surprise that one of Feltman's longtime employees decided he wanted to cash in, that means make money off of, the red hot craze. Nathan Handworker, a Polish immigrant, worked at Feltman's for years. He was saving his earnings for a hot dog stand of his own. He and his wife knew a thing or two about Polish sausages. In 1916, so I'm seeing some more time, so it seems like this one is also a sequence paragraph. He sold his hot dogs for five cents, half the price of Feltman's. Oh, so he's undercutting them. He's selling it for less so people buy his hot dogs. By chance, a New York City subway station opened directly across the street from his hot dog stand. Soon... Nathan's famous hot dogs became even more popular and profitable than Feltman's. <laughs> According to legend, Handworker himself began the annual Nathan's famous hot dog eating contest on an Independence Day in 1916. There's a hot dog eating contest? I've heard about this. I would not win. But the truth is, it started in the 1970s. Oh, cool. If you order a Coney Highland hot dog today, you will not get a Frankfurt on a bun. A Coney Island hot dog comes smothered in chili with mustard and immigrants. So today it says, I'm seeing some more time, right? Today is a time word. Greek immigrants from Detroit, Michigan, Detroit, not Detroit, interesting, claim to have invented this Coney dog. Here is the reason why. 
In the early 1900s, Coney's Feltman's Coney Red Hot Empire was at the height of its success. So I'm seeing some more time words, 1900s. And Nathan's famous hot dog was becoming a symbol of the Coney Island experience. And I do see why, but it's not cause and effect because today's hot dog said not cause yesterday's hot dog. Does that make sense? At the same time, thousands of Greek immigrants are passing through Ellis Island. That's where people used to immigrate from. One of their first stops was the Coney Island Boardwalk. There, they were enticed by the aromas and flavors of the sausages, German and Polish, sold in buns by street vendors. As they traveled west in search of jobs, many were employed at Ford Motor Company in Detroit. So I guess a lot of these hot dog workers worked for the car companies. The wages were good, but owning one's business is the American dream. So they wanted to own their own business. The American dream and the hot dog go hand in hand. That's part of the hot dog's appeal. Greek immigrants in Detroit began opening hot dog stands. They added a Greek red sauce, which resembled the chili-like hot dog sauce used today. Ford plant workers had only 20 minutes for lunch breaks. They would rush to the hot dog stands, grab two steaming hot dogs, throw their money in a box, and run back. No fork, table, or chair required. So it seems like it worked out for them, but I'm also seeing some more time words. Hmm. Began means like started, opening hot dog stands. And then in this one, I'm seeing some time words. They traveled west as they, like as it's happening, that's a time word. So this is still sequence, but that is not the end of the hot dog story. The end would be a time word. This is not the end is also a time word. When talk turns to the unavoidable question, who invented the Coney Island hot dog? Detroit is divided. According to Grace Karos, a third generation Coney hot dog vendor, the story goes like this. In 1903, Grace's grandfather, Gus Karos, came to America. Unable to get a factory job because of his limited English, he began shining shoes. This is where the story gets tricky. Some say that Gus's brother immigrated to America shortly after. So after is a time word. Here's the 1903 is a time word. Keeps going. Let's see. There was no more money, so he opened his hot dog stand. But she says that's wrong. So basically, we're seeing some more time words still sequence. So the debate continues. Whether you prefer Feltman's hot dogs or Nathan's famous hot dogs, Lafayette or American with chili with mustard or onions, Coney Island hot dog lovers agree. No ketchup, please. That is a great resolution to this paragraph. Overall, I would say that this text organization is sequence.